Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, gentlemen and ladies, uh, greetings. Welcome to 2024 M1 discussion. Um, this is UNISA Science Engagement Center. We really appreciate you uh, for your time. And for those that are watching this online session, I mean the recording, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to watch the recording. And for those that are in-house, you are welcome. Uh, please uh, come forward for those of you who are standing behind. There are seats here in the front, please occupy them. Uh, please note that during the session, uh, there'll be an opportunity for you to ask questions, but the chat is open for you to also write questions while Dr. Hose will be presenting. And also feel free to also raise your hand and then we'll give you an opportunity to interact with us. Please be mindful of your camera so that you don't disturb us during the recordings. Otherwise, uh, it's a happy Tuesday and thank you so much. Uh, welcome, Dr. Hose. Thank you, thank you. Um, wow, we've, we've, we've really got a new selection. I'm just reading through the names quickly and it's just amazing. So I was maybe we should do a poll at the end to say who for whom was this the first session that you attended? Um, there's always a first quantum leap of faith. And I think for this week, we've got something really exciting. Um, we are going to do M1 and M2. And um, uh, don't worry about that. I'll handle it, Dr. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Um, yes, yeah, so this week we've got M1, um, Unit 1, 2. We're going to do Unit 1 and 2 today. And then we're going to do Unit 3 and 4 um, on tomorrow. And then on Thursday, we're very exciting. We're going to launch our virtual gear competition. And then we're going to also introduce our newest program, um, which we're going to we're going to play chess. We can just play chess. Uh, of course, it'll be awesome if the robot can play chess, but but that takes the fun out of playing chess. So that's one of the new um, additions to our hectic program. Um, we also have some physics experiments and we have some microbiology and we have a little bit of Python. And so we've got I think we've hit the ground running as a team for 2024. We certainly have our hands full. Um, and so we decided we'll start in February with live online learning. So this is live online learning um, for 2024 M1. Um, so just for the record, um, if anybody's interested, we'll be in Bloemfontein next week. Um, and the team also in Coltonville this weekend. So, so we're on the road as well as, as being online, but it's all exciting. All right. So um, for those, by way of introduction, um, for those who have, um, this is their first time or you're not really sure of what's happening here, um, I have a team on the science campus and Tumelo and Cabello, and then they are, they have a team with me at the moment. And then we have four amazing interns with us. We have Milan, Marina, Sinclair, and um, Fulani. And so, so we are, that's who we are, um, and we are we're ready to go. So I've got the recording started. Tamela has welcomed you. I'm going to share my first slide. I just want to give you an introduction so that you really understand where we are, and I promise then we'll move on to robotics. Let me just quickly. Oh, and then also in the lobby is Almarie. Almarie is a robotics um, judge of many years. And so, Almary, thank you also for joining the team. She's helping Tomello in the um, in the lobby, letting people in. Um, Almary will also train Tomello as a judge. So the, everybody is in this community. Everybody works together. So that's all cool. Okay. So I'm going to share my first screen and unit naught. And then I have to have this voice to tell me it, it's all visible. All visible. Oh, thank you. <laughs> awesome. All right. So, so really welcome to live online learning. Um, and this is not a lecture. This is an engagement. Okay. And so at all times, it's really um, us um, and moving forward. All right. At all times, when you do robotics, though, um, there has to be an engineering component. There's got to be a programming component. There's got to be a 21st century skills component. So, um, You'll notice as we go through the units of unit of M1 and then also in M2 and then M3, um, you'll see there's a part that goes, this is the engineering, then this is programming, and this is how we pull it together. So if you've got an X and Y axis, you've got a you've got a kind of advance on the X and the Y axis and kind of everything that happens in between on the development of your 21st century skills. For you as the educator or coach, 
but also for your learners. And so it's a journey. So welcome to the journey. Um, just about our science center, of which we are extremely proud. Um, we started as a robotics uh, community engagement project in 2009, way back there. And, um, and since then, we have grown. We, um, Cabela joined the project in 2012. And then in 2016, Anzani and Ansazani joined us. And officially, Jamela joined us, I think, in 2019. But he's always been a student and always been join, um, joining in the activity. So that's the, the team. And we are now an accredited National Science Center of South Africa. Um, we got our accreditation on the 9th of June, 2021. Um, and I think that's an important milestone that we are recognized as a robotics hub of excellence. And so welcome to our community. Um, I told you we're doing engineering and programming. We are also the DSI lead agent for STEMI robotics and programming competitions in the country. And so we will be doing a session in March on that. Um, about the different competitions. We also, Tumelo brings in the envir environmental sciences. And so we've got a MOOC, which we are busy publishing and QAing. That'll be ready soon. And then we, uh, we will do environmental sciences sessions. I'm not sure whether it's March or April, but I'll just check my schedule. Um, then we've got some physics demonstrations. We've got lots of equipment to demonstrate, and we'll be adding that to our mix. We've got microscopes, too, for our chemistry demonstrations. Um, we're busy developing science club activities, but that's ongoing. So, um, yeah, that's where we are with that. And then you'll see, you also see that when I show you just now on the on this portals, um, there are science club activities, and we're busy in construction there. And then we will be doing some Python programming. I also think that's March or April. I'm, I'm not sure which month is that. And then our newest data is chess, and Milan and the team will be introducing that on Thursday. Um, together with the virtual gear competition. So lots of things happening. Um, so just as a diagram, and I think for those who've been around, and nothing really much has changed in the last 12 months, but this is kind of where we are. So we are the Science Engagement Center here with the Robotics Community of Practice. Um, it it uh, emanated from the Robotics, I said Robotics Project. Um, and we are equipping coaches and teams to participate regionally, nationally, and definitely internationally in robotics competitions. To do that, down here, we've got the live online learning, and there the live online learning, and we've got the short learning programs. And then we've got our MOOCs, which are on the MOOC portal. But also on the MOOC portal, we are also in collaboration with the Department of Basic Education. And um, I'm just thinking for the, for the, in the interest of time, um, we will set the link out for our Q&A session on a Friday at 3 o'clock, um, and we'll give you some more information on the DBE MOOCs that we have available. Um, but we're also in collaboration with DSI, and that's for the SUSTA and the STEMI Olympiads and competitions, and we are the robotics and coding cluster. And so we have a number of competitions under us, uh, which obviously the mandate is to grow the number of learners participating in these competitions. So that's where we are. That's where we sit. Okay, um, I, I'm not sure, how, um, maybe we should have had a poll on this. So for grade R, we still do problem solving, we do unplugged coding, grade one, twos and threes, we do um, scratch programming with the explore program, we've got, you, uh, if you use a spike essential or a we do kit, um, and then we teach them scratch and we, um, um, I think they have more fun than the teachers, oh, that's debatable. Okay, and then from grade four to grade 12, this is what we're focusing on now, um, we use either a Spike Prime or an EV3. Um, the NXT was the, the generation before EV3, and that's kind of where we all started. Um, we still have some NXTs built as models, mm -hmm. um, but we are moving um, also with the programming. We're going to EV3 Classroom, which is more scratch-based, or that's for the EV3s, or we use the Spike Prime software then for the uh, Spike Prime robots. Okay. Um, just as, as resources, um, I think as we proceed in the session, you might feel a tad overwhelmed, um, which we want to avoid at all costs. Okay, so, so these are the live online learning sessions where we interact, and we welcome questions. We're going to take questions. You can add them in the chat so long if you want to. All the recordings will be available on the YouTube channel, which is I Set UNISA. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, Casper has now got a full-time job. So he is not quite as available to edit and, and uh, upload them, the recordings, but he has indicated that he's willing um, to help us out there. 
Um, for the MOOC queries, um, there's an email address. For the contents of the session, there is a, an address, and Tumela will very graciously explain how to get there. Um, and he also has a Q&A session. I think we need to have two for now. And then if there are any questions about the DBE 001 or 002 MOOCs, <coughs> they have a dedicated email as well called, called Code Robot. Okay. Um, so this is our offering on the MOOC portal. As I said, um, Tumela will explain it to you. We have got M1 M and M2 up and running. Um, M3 should be available hopefully by the end of the week. And M4 is coming soon. We've got the environmental science one. I think that's the Q&A. Um, the cyber safety is also Q&A. The digital, the DBE 001 and 002 are available. And the Python one is coming soon. All right. So that's kind of all your links to answer all your questions. Um, yeah, well, robotics related, I guess. OK. And then for anybody who's interested, there are still short learning programs. And I'm happy to go into more information um, later. But I definitely suggest that before you tackle these short learning programs, you go through M1 and M2 kind of to build your confidence and competence um, as you go forward. OK, there's four available and they are portfolio based. OK, these are the competitions. I'm going to discuss that in March and we're going to let the journey begin and we're going to start by building robots. OK, on this side, this is a robot built with an EV3 robotics kit. On this side, it's a robot built with a Spike Prime kit. Um, and you must just remember the essence of this is to teach the programming principles and engineering fundamentals. And so whichever robotics kit you use, it's all good. All right. I'm going to pause a minute, stop my sharing. And um, Tumela, are there any questions on the on the chat? So far, no questions uh, from our side. Okay. So Unless uh, the online participants can raise up their hands so that we can reply some of the questions that we might have. Anyone? There we go, Mrs. Fenter. Um, the online chat is not available for all the participants. So uh, please watch out for raised hands. Okay. Thank you, Amri. Okay. I have a hand up from Tanvir. Go ahead, uh, Sister Tanvir. No. Um, Tanvir, your hand is up. You have been recognized. Oh, hello. Sorry, my mic was muted. Um, I'm struggling to use two buttons to complete my unit one and unit two because when I click on it, um, it doesn't go straight to the the site and I can't do the MCQ. So I was wondering, have you guys uploaded the MCQ for unit one and mm -hmm. two? I'll go and check that. Thank you for raising that. It should be available. Thank you. Just in, just the unit one and two MCQs. Yes, yes. Okay. I'll go and have a look. Okay. Actually, everything except for the syllabus and the overview. It's it's been through Q and A, so it's very strange. Okay. All right. Let's take one more question from um, Tamila. Uh, Pedro. Yeah, yes, uh, Dr. Holmes. Good afternoon. Yes. Afternoon. Good afternoon. It's Pedro Mkala here from Ibonia Academy. Yes. Yeah, I just want to ask the, the unit two. We normally used to have um, a choice of a spike and EV3. So this year is only spike. The MCQ is only spike. It's um, it says Spike, but it's actually it's just the Scratch programming. Oh, okay. Okay, it's the Scratch program. So if you use EV3 Classroom, you're going to get the same code. Oh, okay. Okay. All Is right. it an issue? Is it an issue that, that we have taken out EV3 Lab? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
Okay, let me see what I can do. Okay. 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 Uh, I did speak to Pedro on the email. Uh, they asked the okay. same question. Okay. And I did indicate to Pedro and the team saying that uh, if you have done the or are currently using EV3 Classroom, the programming style is still the same. It shouldn't be difficult. Thank and that goes much. for all uh, participants as well. Thank you so much, Tamara. Okay. Yeah, no, thank you. It's it's not really difficult. It's just different. <laughs> well, it's about learning. Yeah, Pedro, you thought you were going to get a different answer here. Eh? I see what <laughs> you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. All right. Uh, any other hand before I... Okay, there's no hand. Uh, Dr. Holes, you can proceed. Okay, thank right. you. Okay. All right, excellent. Ah. Lindy, okay, we've got a last hand, Dr. Hose, but you can start sharing your screen so that uh, once Lindy on. is done, um, Lindy, over to you. Yes, how are you? Hello, we're good. We're good. yes, Lindy, I'm good. I, I, I'm struggling to log in into the M1. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, can we can hear you. Yes, I, 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 I'm struggling to, to, to log in into M1. Um, can, can we, uh, Lindiwe, can we have this demonstration in the Friday Q&A session? Then I'll show you. Okay, ma'am. Okay. No problem. Thank you very much. All right, here Thank we go. You. There we go. All right, so now I need to get it again. Can you see my screen? This is the same, same old. Here yes, we go. Vicky. Thank you very much. Okay, just unmute, just mute that microphone. There we go. Okay. Right. There we go. Okay, so we're going to t we're going to start with um, right from the beginning. We're going to start with a building and building something concrete, and we're going to build a robot. Okay, so what do you use to build a robot? So for for this our learning environment, we use a robotics kit. And so here on the left hand side is the EV3 set. You'll see everything is grays and whites and blacks and different shades of gray maybe. Um, and it's a spike prime, it's just the more colorful version. Fundamentally, there's nothing different between the two sets. Whether you learn on the EV3 or whether you learn on the spike prime, the engineering fundamentals and the programming principles are gonna be exactly the same, okay? Um, and I am um, appealing to you that if you have EV3s, use the EV3s, don't wait till you can get a spike prime. The other thing said, if you, if you have, um, like you've won the lotto and you've got all new spike primes, Please donate the EV3s to us. We have got a waiting list for equipment in this country, and we are really battling to keep up with the requests um, for kits. So if you have a kit that you're not using, you've got to give it back. Okay, and, and maybe help out another school or um, come alongside another school, but it's there's a very high need for these um, kits. That also said, this is a forgiving learning environment, all right? If you make a mistake, you just rechange it. You just change it. If something doesn't work, you redesign it. If a program doesn't work, you modify it. But this is a safe and forgiving learning environment. That said, it is also a durable learning environment. Um, our robotics kits have now been traveling um, since 2014. So this is 10 years our EV3s, and I am a kudos to the robot to the robots. They have been traveling South Africa for 10 years, and they are still in the same condition as when we received them. And we have, uh, Cabello and I initially had a vision of a million learners, and I think we're pretty close to that. So um, keep learning, keep learning. And change over your program into EV3 classroom. <laughs> okay. So we build, we use the kits to build and the laptops we and the software we need to program. Okay, so just, uh, uh, there's many questions here. The EV3 over here, 
the EV3 robotics kit, oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. EV3 robotics kit consists, uh, we program EV3 classroom or classroom pack um, programming and the Spike Prime kit, we use the Spike Prime programming. They both scratch. So, um, both, well, they scratch, scratch is scratch. And so it's familiar. Um, whether your learners do just normal scratch or robotic scratch, um, it's all part of their learning journey. And so encourage them all the way. Okay. And a kit, we usually say a robotics kit. There's a core set and an expansion set. You can still build robots with a core set, but your expansion sets are a whole lot of just extra pieces. And so we can just build a little bit more detail on our robots. Um, if there are any teachers here in the in the session with a uh, grade one, two, and three, we use the Spike Essential Robotics Kit. And then obviously use the Spike Essential Scratch. So it's just a limited version. There are two angles to the Spike Essential Scratch programming. You can either use the words but most grade ones haven't got words yet. So then we just use the, the icon blocks and we drag and drop it. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's the robotics kit. Okay, so it's never, we build a robot and da -da, that's it. Okay, that's not the idea. Okay, you have to keep building. And so we never break down a robot, we just morph it and design it and change over. So you have one robotics kit and you can build gazillion robot designs okay we're going to start with wheeled robots because um it's just kind of the easiest entry level with a wheeled robot and i'll show you some of my robots that i've got parked here next to me just the if you look there we go the traction is always in front so your your wheels are always in the front to to give you grip on the surface and then at the back we usually have a balancing beam or a ball bearing i'll show you just now very much like those ball bearings over there Okay, so this would be the back of the robot because there's the ball bearings and there's the traction, there's the wheels. The wheels must grip, so they must go forward. Okay, however, if you go and look on your Spike Prime app, if you download it and install it, you get all these really cute designs of everything, of walking robots and playing robots, and, and we're going to keep you busy, all right? There are so many robots to build, okay? And then tomorrow afternoon, I'll show you about attachments. So you build a robot and then you add attachments or you build a different design. Um, welcome to our world. Welcome to our world. All right. But out there uh, where, where the big robots are, um, and you've got to remember, we, we're creating a vision for these learners. We're equipping them to deal with their future. It's not our future. We are need to develop the skills of our learners so that they can thrive in their future. All right. So a robot here's um, kind of over here is a robot. And so either the robot is mobile, which means it can move or it's fixed. And your fixed robot would be kind of eh, 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 your arm, you know, picking things up and putting things down in an assembly line. But your mobile robot would be the one that can move. Now, move is move. So you can either move in the water or you can move on land or you can move in the air. And if I give you some examples, like the airborne mobile robot would then be a drone. Okay, your terrestrial mobile robot would be um, the Mars robots that explore the moon surface, or can, we can carry on. Then you get the aquatic robots, and they're the ones that go into the water. Okay, a lot, a lot of things happening at the moment, but all um, we can use that as inspiration for our learners to say, what if, what if you were the next to design another really aquatic robot. And we'll get, I'll show you some examples of that as well. All right, so terrestrial, how does it move? Well, it can obviously move with wheels. Um, that's the easy part, but then it can move with legs so it can walk. And so as a humanoid, um, your humanoid robot will be able to walk, um, but your spider robot has got eight legs and it doesn't go these four and then those four, it walks differently. And your horse walks differently and your dog and your elephant and so, so legged, uh, robots are fine, but then there's how do the legs maneuver? And a um, a lizard moves also with four legs, but moves differently. Okay, so lots to think about in this little straightforward picture. Okay, so today we're going to just do the basics of robotics, and I'm hoping by the end of the session you would have um, be inspired to go and install your programming um, your programming app. Um, and you will start looking for building instructions. So let me just quick also pause here. Um, when you build it, so let's just take one step back as well. If I ask you to make a cup of tea, you know how to make a cup of tea because you have watched people make tea. You know how to open a door. 
you know how to sit down, you know how to stand, you know how to, so these are all things where you have a frame of reference. Since little small, we are learnt or taught these, we learn these things, not through teaching, but through observation and watching and exploring. Okay. But building a robot, it's not quite everybody's, you know, like by the, by the third birthday, you should have built a robot. So it's not like that. And so what we always need to be mindful of is our learners have no frame of reference. Okay. So now when we're, when we're in the class, I, I want you to keep in mind, we have building instructions to develop that frame of reference. But once the learners have that, they must start designing on their own. Okay. And that is, that is the incredible journey that we're on. Okay. M1. So for M1, we are building. And um, just in case you're wondering, all this content is on the M1 portal under syllabus. And if you click on syllabus, you'll get an overview document and you'll get a challenge document. So I'll talk about the challenge tomorrow, but um, the overview document gives you all this content. Okay. Focuses on the wheeled robot. And so there's a number of leading questions that you can ask your learners. So like provide examples of different robots that if they want to, um, you can let, let them do that, or you can have pictures up of different robots, and then you can discuss the different robots, describe their function, what does the robot do, um, what are some of the adapt adaptations required so the robot can function as required, um, what is the robot built of, name the components, you know, are there, are there beams, are there axles, um, are there wheels, are there sensors needed, um, how do you ensure that the robot is sturdy and rigid? Um, one of the hardest, hardest things to do at a robotics competition is when a team's robot falls apart. And then it has not been checked for sturdiness and rigidness. And so, yeah, you as, as the coach, that's what you need to do. You need to make sure that that structure is sturdy and rigid. Uh, what's the source of power? Um, well, it's a power bank. They have their own power banks, which need to be recharged. And so it'll be good if, on your robotics team to have two or three power monitors and they need to I don't know, the more at the, at the beginning of the day they need to come into the classroom into the robotics class and make sure that the robots are charging because um, otherwise you're going to run out of power and then your robotics class is going to be quite boring if the robot doesn't move okay and then one of one of the important things that we need to have with with these learners is they need to be able to know how it moves, but they need to be able to describe it. They can't say, well, there's a thingy and there's another thingy and then the thingy moves and then the other thingy moves and, and that's how it moves. No, 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 no. You've got to, you've got to say, this is the motor and attached to the motor is an axle and attached to the axle is a wheel and attached to the wheel, it's got tires and the tires have got traction. You see, they have to be able to describe how the robot moves. So that if you throw a curveball and say, well, why is the robot not moving on the surface? Then they'll be able to explain it to you without like, I don't know. Okay. Okay. So building uh, unit one is about building. And so there are seven objectives and activities. Okay. So I've got a link here and it's also in the, in the document. Um, it's a constructopedia and it's for EV3. And we are busy compiling a constructopedia for Spike Primes. The idea of the Constructopedia is to consider different structures, okay? Can you see over here, there's the brain of the robot and the motors are on either side. So then you'll get a flat robot, okay? Whereas over here, for some reason, but we'll explain that later, for some reason, the motors are underneath the brain. Okay, now, What's really cool about this, and you can probably do quite a few classes out of this in, in class time, or get groups. Do if, if you've got seven groups, if you've got seven robotics kits, then you can do seven groups. All right. Um, now to convert this structure, this structure, to a moving robot, you need to add wheels, and you need to add wires, and you need to connect the motor to the brain, and then you need to write the program, and so that becomes another learning activity, okay? Um, I, you would do well to, to download the Constructopedia, and if anybody's willing to help us compile the, the um, Spike Prime Constructopedia, please speak to us. We would love to have your help with that one. Okay, all right. So, oh, that's what it looks like, by the way. There we go. All right, 
So how do you connect things? Well, you've got these little wires. And I always say, here we go. It's like, you know, in the aeroplane when, when they click your seatbelt in. So here's the wire. And then you click it in. And you must make sure it goes, oh, my word, click. <laughs> there we go. Um, for the spike primes, their, their uh, ports are just labeled A, B, C, D, E. But for the EV3, you've got input ports and output ports. So your output is then your motors, your, your medium motor and your large motors. Those are the outputs that the motors turn and they turn the wheels. Whereas your input, and we'll get to that in, in two later on, your input is how you read data from the environment. Okay, so, so for example, your ultrasonic will be able to read if there's something in front because it, it sends out a signal and it measures the distance between the obstacle in front of it and the robot. I make it stop if there's a danger. That sense if it bumps into something, it'll stop. And you need them at the back when you reverse. Okay, so that is that is what we call the brain. And this is the rechargeable battery pack, which we then put at the bottom. It's a good idea not to um, click them in, click them out, click them in, click them out. Blah, blah, blah. It, it wears it out. So just leave it in, leave it on the brain. But do make sure that you switch off your, your brains at the end of a class. Okay. Oh, yes, it must be fully charged. Um, and this is when it comes when you are working a lot with a robot. Ching, 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 ching. Um, I have found over the years that 45 minutes, if, you, if you're working the robot very hard, um, you can probably get to 40, between 45 minutes and an hour, and then you need to recharge them. Not that they are pop, but it's that you have optimal battery power. Because um, otherwise your programs, especially when you write very precise programs, um, it's going to impact on that one. Okay. And there are your input ports. So there's touch sensor, gyro sensor, color sensor, and ultrasonic. And at the back, you put your output ports. Um, so that's very similar to what, what it looks like on the, on the Spike Prime. The color is just very different. Mm -hmm. If you look at that one, you look at that one. But it's okay. All right. Okay, so the focus of unit one, and there's a lot going on. Um, these are all the terms. You would probably have taught this in what used to be technology, and I've done technology. Um, so these are the kind of concepts, axles, wheels, pulleys, the power, gears, and transmission, and the rolling resistance, and backlash. So these are the, the concepts. But the input process output is one of the most important concepts. Okay. Um, but now I need you just to relax and say, there are so many resources available. And if you can't find something, please let us know. Um, but it's a, you can almost be overwhelmed with the amount of, um, and it's just a volume. It's just a volume of resources that are available. You can't even count it. So um, if you have a Spike Prime, um, the Prime Lessons is a good, good base to start. If you have an EV3, EV3 Lessons, um, there's a driving base, there's a droid bot, there's a droid bot apparently for Spike as well. For EV3, the Steve bot and the Riley Rover, the two main um, robots. We use the Riley Rover when we do workshops. Um, and the, the biggest reason why we do that is because um, we can actually build that little robot. <laughs> we did it for Nelson Mandela's birthday once. I think it was in like 67 minutes or 66 minutes. <laughs> we just, you can do it. Okay, 67 minutes, you can build a Riley Rover and program it. Um, also, don't let your learners have the building instructions always. Let them build it and then dismantle it and then build it and dismantle it. Then they have to build it with, they get two pages or let them only, they're only allowed to look at two instructions or, but it's, they need to start remembering and building up a frame of reference okay and as we go along we'll also be sharing all these resources we are happy to share all these resources okay um there are more and more and more um, my two favorites are mr hino mr hino has got some really cool videos and also um my builder dude my builder dude a guy was a young boy when i when i started pro robotics and I'm not sure, but I think we lost Dr. Hose. Oh, Marie, can we hear Dr. Hose from the side? Simon, this side. Um, uh, 
image has frozen. Oh, shock. There's Something. a question from Banishwa in the interim. No, no, no question. Thanks. I wanted to know whether the, the, it's me who, who lost the network. It's OK. Uh, Am I back? Okay. Yes. This could have to back. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. It just went ping, ping, and I'm like, oh, my word. OK. <laughs> I think uh, while on that note, Dr. Hose, I can take some few questions with your permission. Good idea, good idea. Um, anyone, any question, please raise your hand. Kindly, please. Uh, we apologize about for the technical uh, issues that we are experiencing. Uh, that was beyond our control. I'll see. Uh, I almost said Dr. Elmeri uh, Fanter. <laughs> Just a stupid question. <clears throat> Does the teachers have to follow or build without instructions as well? Or can teachers at least follow the instructions? You know, we're not that clever. <laughs> the kids teachers learn much easier. Yeah, there we go. There we go. And Elmi talks with it with a lot of experience. Teachers there may be, <laughs> there may be some challenges you can add to for your kids if they are building. Let them um, program the robot to run on a flat surface on a table and then put it on a carpet. Yes. And do not put it in the sand, but the impact on sand would also be interesting to measure, but you're going to write off your robot. But try different surfaces as each of those will have an impact. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. And and also, um, and Elmeri also that when the learners can be able to explain why it's got a different impact. Yet. Yes. Absolutely. And linked to that, sorry, Dr. Host, what I've seen with competitions, the kids that's coming from the coastal region have an issue with the tire flexibility when they're in Gauteng, and the same with the Gauteng kids going down to the coast. There's a difference in the pressure, and robots perform differently. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Absolutely. Um, so just kind of where we are, um, I, I need to show the Riley Rover um, looks like kind of looks like this, but without this frame around it. OK, so it's just a we call it a baby robot, just a little robot. This has all been built on. I should have taken it off before the class. But it's just a little baby robot. And then as you as you progress, you add things. So the next level, which I taught them was this the, the frame to keep the robot um, in structure. Then we took the same design and then we had a, and this is where Constructopedia comes in. So this was the same design, um, but the competition required a flat robot. So we needed to put, you can see the motors next to the brain. Okay. This is, this is Angel and she's been around for 10 years already. So this was a different design. You can, you can see the robot is flatter. Okay. All right. And then as, as you progress, and please, uh, when you're looking at YouTube channels, please don't be overwhelmed with how awesome the robots are. Um, it's a learning curve, all right? So this was this was the robot. This is Mario. And Mario, you see Mario looks totally different. Very compact, well-designed. It's got a, a resistance to catching on anything um, for the robot that it, it had to compete in. It had to be very compact, very sturdy, and very lock, well, kind of um, low risk, okay, to do high risk missions, okay. This is three different robots, same building, same robotics kit, same design, just modified slightly for the function, okay. I'll show you those again just now, all right. Okay, Tumelo, if there's nobody else, I'm going to carry on with the presentation. Is that good? Yes, please go ahead. No questions so far. All right, you will monitor the. We need to sort out the chat. I don't know why the chat. I actually made it available. I don't know why it didn't happen. All right, let's carry on. Building. Here we go. And you can see my slides from the current slide. Okay, we were reading building instructions. Okay. So building instructions come in a number of steps. And you just need to be able to. This is where teamwork comes in. So, so one member of the team will will read the building instructions, say another two will get the pieces out of the robotics kit that's neatly sorted and not just 
not just a whole collection of pieces. Then the other one will explain how to add it and so then and then you you kind of move the responsibilities as you go along. Um, it takes a bit of effort, but you're developing teamwork and collaboration. All right. So step number three requires that you have one of these and you have one of these and one of these. The four over there says it must be of length four. How do you know it is of length four? And I'll, oh, I should have got one. If you take an axle, I'll go get you one. No, no. If you take an axle next to a beam, and if it's four holes, then it's a four axle, and which is why it's a four right up there. All right. I'll show you that now. And what do you do with this? You push this into that one. And what do you do with that? You push that over there, and you put that over there. That you've read the building instructions. All right. That's reading the building instructions. That's number three. Those are the step pieces you need. And it's a good idea to have them on a tray. Please don't just put them on the table. One of those and one of those. Then you take this and you put it in there. Okay, so let's read this. For this one, this is step number 22. You need one of these pieces. And you turn the robot around and you put it underneath. See? That's what you do. That's building instructions. The bad thing is, oh, there's 22. You need to turn it around. And the robot is upside down. Okay, so oopsie. So just kind of um, there's a whole lot of steps that you follow. However, if you make a mistake on step number four, you're going to get to a point where you say, "Hmm, this is not actually right," and then you're going to have to unpick everywhere back. Reading of building instructions does not come easily to our learners. They, um, they skip steps. But let's see how far we get. Okay, now some some building instructions are videos. So over here um, is a YouTube video. There's all the pieces um, you need, and then um, so you can watch it as well. I prefer step by step that you can step, you know, click, click, click. Um, if you want to watch and stop and watch and stop, then you can do that as well. Okay. Then good good news uh, for all our busy teachers. There's a classrooms activity for all the Spike Prime designs, and there's also a building design, a classroom activities for EV3 as well. And it's got step by step building instructions. It's just all there, and you're welcome to download it and please use it. Okay. But what are you getting from the from following building instructions? Um, it doesn't come easy to have a three a 2D building instruction, and then you've got to build a 3D something, a 3D um, robot okay following instructions is also not that easy even you tell the learners follow it very carefully uh, no they don't always do that um, learning a vocabulary learning about wheels and axles and motion and friction and traction um, that's also a whole vocabulary solving problems if something doesn't fit it doesn't fit and then you have to do something else um, but also how do you solve the problem what do you have to do how do you put this all together um, oh, and teamwork. Please never solo. Never let any learner work on any robot ever solo. Please, please, please. All right. I'm just looking there. Okay. All right. Please take care of your robotics kits. Um, there's really no fun with incomplete kits. Um, and I know we've got a couple of sites that have got loan kits. If it's returned with only three wheels, that means the next school can only build a three-wheeled robot. Um, it's not enough. And then you've obviously got to leave time for cleaning up. Um, so you, you must not, as a teacher, be caught off guard or you have to clean up after a robotics lesson. <laughs> um, so uh, this is not okay. And it's not okay. Why? Because you can see all the pieces are dear Makar. The pieces are lying on the, on the tablecloth and not in their pieces. Um, if you look into the boxes and you look onto the trays, it's all pieces all mixed up. It's not okay. Um, there's paper in the boxes, and that's not okay. The small pieces are in the trays. The bigger pieces go into the bigger boxes. Um, what's also very worrying is this brain is busy charging, and it's balancing on the laptop. And this is charging here. And this thing, you can see, is going underneath here. It actually went all the way back there. So somebody down the bottom there pulls that wire, this, both are going to probably go flying, the brain and the laptop, but the brain first. And the brain down is 6,000 rand, just like that. 
And once it's fallen, it's fallen. So please take care of your robot. Um, yeah, a good idea is to every time the team is finished with a work session to take a picture of their of their robotics kits and say this is how we found it, this is how we left it. It will take a little bit of time, um, but it's just a more explicit way of showing. Give, give me evidence that you've tidied up. Um, I'll come back to a robotics lesson now. So here are um, a space. You must have space for all your things. I have got gazillion trays. Um, the girls at the back are my coaches. They were my coaches for the day. Well trained. They put pieces in trays. And so the learners learn to put pieces in trays when they build things. Um, in, if we have, say, a, a two-hour session, half an hour for introductions and what we're going to do, one hour to work and half an hour for explanation and cleanup. Okay? And somebody must check the floors and the boxes must be kept sorted, please. All right. There comes a time where you need to wash the robotics, the Lego pieces, not the not the electronics, please not, just the, just the pieces. Um, but that also needs to be done. Um, and I'll, I'll elaborate on that later, maybe. Okay, but the brain is really important. Um, you've got to keep it charged. Um, and you've got to update it, obviously. Um, and you must learn how to troubleshoot because you are obviously the coach. So you need to be able to debug. Um, there is a really cool video on what can go wrong when your robot stops. Um, well, number one is, do you have wires connected? Are the wires connected properly? And or is your firmware updated? And that is, you just have to take care of it. It's something you have to do, like you have a car that goes to a, get a mechanic to be um, serviced. Okay. These are the resources. We've got the Riley Rover instructions that I showed you. The EV3 lessons is important for EV3. If you've got Spike Prime, you'd build the driving base and you go to Prime lessons. Um, I need to just put out there that your YouTube videos can be how, but they can also be well, and they can also be, mm, they can be very overwhelming. So just keep a reality. As much as I do believe you should um, share videos with your learners, um, try to keep a reality check on that one. Okay. And then my builder dude 35, he's got his own video channel and he's got really cool lessons there. And so, and then you've got us, we are the online community and we are happy to, journey with you um, through 2024 and whatever happens after that. Okay, so you need to build a robot. Any questions about building robots? Let's stop this quickly. Are we okay? Are we all building robots? Ladies and gentlemen, if you do have any questions, feel free. There we go. We have a question from Lusanda. Hi, Lysander. Hi, sorry. No, I think my hand was still up just now um, when you were, when we couldn't hear you. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. All Thanks, right. Uh, <laughs> we've got a, a Lysander as well. No, we've got a Lysander and a Lysander. Oh, my goodness, it's getting confusing. Uh, uh, the next one? Lusanda Mangungu. Okay, uh, Jerome Lamini, please feel free. Oh, sorry, I didn't. Hello. Sorry. Yes, sorry. Mr. Uh, hello. Um, oh, yes. It's sorry. not Mr. Jerome. Uh, we are his employees. Oh, um, okay. We are an investment from SOS. So it's our first time here. We are three. We are still um, trying to follow up. Yeah, but so far, so good. Thank you so much. Welcome, right. welcome. We're going to come visit you soon. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. We have another question from uh, Abel Maboya. Hello, Abel. Okay. Your microphone is unmuted, but we cannot hear you, Abel. Mm. Okay, Hi. while you're still trying to figure out your microphone, I'll give others a chance, Abel. I'll go to Boniswa. Hello. Hello. Um, hi. Um, uh, so this is my question. Uh, I'm here. Uh, and uh, this is my 
Come again, don't worry, continue. No, uh, I was greeting. Good, uh, good evening. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. Oh, it's an evening from your side. Which country are you at? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Good day. <laughs> oh, oh I thought you were calling us from overseas. Okay. Eh? <laughs> no, I wanted to, I wanted to ask the um, from Doctor House if you can share the slides with us. What? Yes. Um. So on M1, I will put up all the PDFs of all these presentations with pleasure. Yes, I will do that. Right. Thanks a lot. You're very welcome. All right, uh, Abel, you can try your microphone. Let's hear. Ooh, we still can't hear you. Abel, perhaps really? log in and log out. Mm. Maybe it might work. Uh, otherwise, I'll go to Solomon. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Solomon yes, from Solomon? Yes. It's King Solomon from the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my challenge is we, we haven't started yet with uh, schools. I don't know what, what must we do to start. Um, I, I think um, they said we must uh, fill in a, a form which now may hasn't received yet so okay. solomon solomon you for for term one okay yes. um we need to do m1 and m2 with the learners it's a good grounding for for learning the basics yes okay so you will go to m1 and you'll download the overview document and then there's four units there okay so there you've got four lessons well you've got more than four lessons but You've got four focus areas. So you can do each for, for each focus area, you can do it over two weeks. So then you've got eight weeks of learning. Okay. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you now on the MOOC portal because under syllabus, there's the overview document, there's the, the challenge at the end, and then yes. there's also um, a whole lot of um, downloadable lesson plans that you can use. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. And then term two, we're going to do the virtual gear competition that's going to launch on, on, on Thursday. Okay. Okay. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Abel, I still see your, your hand is up and your microphone is unmuted. Perhaps try to say something that's here. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it's your connection, unfortunately. Um, uh, let's go to Lusanda. Go for it, Lusanda Saubona. Hi, hello, Ntlapo. Thank you so much. Uh, I've got a couple of questions. I had started with my robotics uh, last week. Now, uh, I am experiencing the, there's a school in Tomo that I am coaching. They received the kit for foundation phase. Now, what I'm experiencing on the tablets is the fact that um, when it comes to challenge robots, they, the, um, the, the robots, they don't want to connect into the installed program, which is, I believe, it, it has got a yellow uh, logo. Uh, it's, uh, it's called, uh, I'm not sure whether they are programs are not the same it's spike yes with the yellow logo but it is not spike lego education Lusanda, can we can we do this problem solving afterwards all right okay because we, fine uh, it's already four o'clock i've got one more lecture to do still yeah okay all right okay then i've got a question on when it comes to building I think I'm struggling on the criteria that I need to use, how the learners are supposed to be hands on the Lego pieces, because um, I'm also in a, in a situation whereby my learners, they do a mess when it comes to Lego pieces. So I need some kind of coaching when it comes to that, in a sense that how many learners uh, who must build and what other learners are doing. I really need some some coaching when it comes to that. And okay. also, um, I had noticed that the learners are very 
a passionate when it comes to building a robot. And then now uh, I was also not sure whether, um, yes, I know I've got three kids, but now there's a situation whereby the motors, uh, they are not enough for the learners to build another robot. I think that's part of troubleshooting as well. So also I was stuck with that last week in a situation whereby we built the two robots already with four motors and then we were left with three motors. So stuff like that. I, I just need some clarity regarding that. Yes. I will do I will do a lesson on coaching on how to coach in a classroom. Okay. Yes, yes, I really okay. need that skill. Thank you. Those okay. are my questions. Thanks, Lisa. And of course, and, and of course, the one for the tablet on the last for troubleshooting. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Bye. I've made a note here. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Lysander. Uh We've got a question from Do. Um, Do over to you. Oh, good evening, everyone. Hi. Uh, Oh, I'm Biduzi mm -hmm. from Mamelodi. So I wanted to ask, I wanted to register for a school called Charisma School of Excellence and SOS. So I've been going through the websites, but I cannot find the actual place where I could register for the two organizations. Okay. Um, do, can you send me an email and I will, I will go offline and help you with that process? I'm not sure what okay. you're trying to register for. Okay, I'll send an email with all the information. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. Then I can assist you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Hose. Thank you. Over to you, uh, Naidu. Uh, feel free to unmute yourself. No. So I'm Hello, yes, you. go ahead. Yes, I'm a teacher at Remedial School. It's my first time that I'm here. And um, so, and we purchased uh, the Spike uh, Prime sets and we are eager to try them out. So I'm quite happy with the information that I've received so far. And uh, so, uh, so for our foundation phase from grade two on upwards, we were using Scratch Coding and uh, the other coding apps that were available for us. So, um, uh, like you say, um, Tricia, that you're going to share classroom guide. And I, yes. So, how would I get hold of that? Okay, so I will do a session on how to do a class, how to do robotics in the classroom. I'll happily do that. Um, mm -hmm. Let me just hear: Are you doing your robotics um, as uh, extramural or in the classroom? So, uh, as part of the computer lesson. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Yes. So what I'm going, I'm going to get a whole lot of teachers who are doing it that way, and we will have yes. just a general discussion on how to do it in the classroom. Yep. All okay. right. And thank you so and much. You're very welcome. And mostly grade fours upwards, or do you want something for the grades one, two, and three as well? So, so I teach computers throughout from grade one, and we've got a new grade eight class. Okay. So, yes. So throughout, so it, I would, I'm very interested in all awesome. of it. Yes. Okay, and just just um, your school. Where are you teaching? In which province? So in uh, Johannesburg. It's yes. So, so it's Crossroads Remedial School that I'm from. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> I, Venusha, I'm just making a, a make a message here. Okay. Crossroads. Yes. Let me see what I can put together. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm going to call in the experts. I'm going to call in all those teachers who are doing it in the classroom, and now we will have a discussion on that. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. All right. All right. Tamila, are we done? Shall I continue? Yes, we are done. Uh, I don't see any hands. You can continue, Dr. Holmes. Okay. All right. So this is the last section. Um, and it's about programming. And as much as I want to give you a demonstration, I almost want you to, I want to say, I'm going to just show you something about programming. Um, 
and then I'm hopefully you you're going. Let me just make sure uh, slideshow from the beginning. Can you see my slides um, presentation? Yes. Yes, I can. Oh, yes. thank you. That's a good voice. There we go. So, um, I, I, and I see it's already four o'clock. So I'm not going. We're not going to do practical programming now. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you what what it does it mean to program robots, and then I'm going to ask you as homework to actually install the software. Um, and then we'll have a discussion about that to start with um, tomorrow. So when you're programming robots, I mean, this is a beautiful robot. It's sitting here, it's a lovely robot. And I can look, take this robot and say, this is a beautiful robot. But as my father would say, it's just a mental piece, um, cockies. So it's not going anywhere until you program it. But I, I want to also tell you that when the robots start moving in your class, um, I almost want to say you need to have your lecture done before the robots start moving because then it becomes very loud. And it is an amazing um, experience to watch children um, discover, discover programming. Um, it's a privilege. And you might not have the words to describe how well, the excitement of this robot moving forwards and backwards and turning and, and making sounds, but it is really something else. Um, it's amazing. And so the fundamentals of programming is actually you, you've, what we're going to do now is I'm just going to say what we're actually doing. And I haven't, I'm going to just take, I'm um, hopefully you can see this robot. So it's got two wheels. These two wheels, um, is it clear enough to Miller are connected to motors here. All right. And what you're doing is you're programming the motors. All right. So if you're, if you're two wheels, if your two wheels are spinning at the same time, at this with the same power, your robot's going to go forward. If they rotate this way, your robot's going to go backwards. If you switch this one off and turn this one, it's going to turn that way. If you have two wheels, you switch this one off and you turn this one, it's going to go that way. Ta da! That's what you're programming. You're programming the motors. For now, we're just programming the motors. Obviously, as we move forward, we're going to add data, so measurements so from the sensors, and that will be used in your programming. But for now, all we're doing is controlling the motors. Okay, so um, for all those who've been with us for a very long time, like myself, this is what EV3 lab coding looks like. Um, it's a very easy environment to learn. Um, it is guaranteed, and I've taken many teams internationally using this code. Okay. Um, there's nothing wrong with it, but we're all now moving just to standardize onto. So if you have an EV3 robot, you use either EV3 lab. This one we're phasing out. Um, we are using EV3 classroom. And EV3 classroom code looks like this, which looks like your scratch code. Okay. Um, if you have a Spike Prime robot, you're going to use a Spike Prime coding. It's also scratch. I think just cut off a little bit. And it set out, I didn't quite know that. <laughs> All right. So in unit two, uh, we consider the program the functioning of the program. Okay. So, and I think it's early days for your robot, um, for your learners to know all the implications of what the problems are. But it'll be interesting if you ask the question maybe um, say at the beginning of each month and see how, how their understanding changes. So so now, if you say, what are the problems the robot doesn't move, function properly, well, it doesn't have the correct wheels, the wires are not connected, um, the motors are not straight, the robot is not whatever. Um, but as they move forward, they'll be able to list more problems that could occur. Okay. Directions that a wheeled robot can move, or can move forward or backwards. Then it can go left and go right, and then it can go, it can wheelie, <laughs> it can turn. Um, Explain how a wheeled robot moves. All right. So a wheeled robot can move forward and can straight. It can also nee, 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 go around the corners, go backwards, go fast and slow. Um, so the other thing is about is about power. So it, yes, um, and if you have an all boys team, they're probably going to make the robot go 100% straight down. Um, when you're testing robots to do functions, um, I, the the ball part is kind of give it about 50 60 percent if we're going straight and 30 percent around the corner it's the same principles as when you're driving the other one to watch out for is there's a thing called momentum 
it is momentum all right and it exists so if you go forward and back you don't you don't in in we just don't go forward and back we go forward stop change gears and come back so the same with the robot you go forward you stop and you come back um, a good programming habit to have is to put pauses even if it's just for half a second all right put pauses in when you change direction um, that little skid can cost you can cost you very dearly remember it's a small robot and so the impact of a small distance for a small robot is proportionally huge okay so don't a don't go too fast b um, wait use weights in between so you go forward wait and then you turn um, and then you come back and just on that with a wheeled robot your wheels must be clean much like your car wheels must be pumped your wheels on your robot must be clean and i'll and i'll tell you how you're going to do that just now okay so in unit two there are obviously programming objectives and so you've got to be able to how do you move the robot forward now the rotation is of the wheel okay so one rot one rotation is 360 degrees um you can move in seconds but then you must have the same power okay so if you have if you have 10 percent power for one second you're not going to come very far if you have 100 percent power for one second you're going to get much further okay for everything that you do you can do it rotations degrees or seconds uh, my kind of rule of thumb is if you're going straight you do rotations you take if you take if you're going to turn uh, or you're going to go sideways then you, you rotate and remember that a 90 degree rotation is not turning the robot 90 degrees um, you probably need to rotate it two and a half times to turn the robot 90 degrees okay and that gets quite difficult for the little ones but it needs to be explained um do experiments to see how if you go forward or backwards how do you go how far do you go for different power settings so stick you know let it go on a on a flat surface on the on the robotics table and you put uh, markers down yeah and then you can add sound but the sound adding sound just makes it very loud but if you're brave you can do it all right so to make the robot move this is kind of the code you see it says when the program starts and this is all dragged and dropped from the side you set the motors to c and d you move for three rotations at 50 percent power and 50 percent power and then you stop moving okay uh or you can say set motor to c and d and you set the c to 50 percent and d to 50 percent and then you move three rotations and you stop moving unfortunately and you see this is like a puzzle and it's not finished so your robot is now waiting for something else to happen and then it flashes it's like okay when's my next command when's my next command when's my next command okay um a good habit is to get learners to program properly from the beginning okay so um this is a start and end well and um this is what sylvia taught me this is the hamburger Adam, you can see it's the hamburger there is the bun and here's the bun at the bottom all right there has to be a hamburger it has to be put into on the top roll and the bottom roll and everything else in between is the hamburger okay so that's our hamburger effect you've got to have a top part and a bottom part when the ro robot starts and stop and exit the program so your robot can stop flashing at you okay all right it's a drag and drop and um we're running out of time now but we will do a drag and drop demonstrate we'll start with a demonstration tomorrow morning and see how far you've also got so these are your, your types and we just drag and put it in there this robot is connected and it's got a touch sensor and it's got two wheels okay when i took this picture um see how far you get all right just for a convention i took if you would you have the robot if you stand behind it with your tractions in front then your left hand is B and this one is connected to C. If you have 30 kids in a class all doing robotics, it can become quite chaotic. And um, so there's good to have conventions. Um, reset your motors um, is a good idea, especially in EV3s. Uh, we did that often. Um, and in Spike Primes, there is, I googled um, code, to reset, oops, code to reset Spike Prime motors and we'll talk about that. All right, more good programming. Please save your programs. Test the coding. Um, don't write a whole long piece of code and then say run and then it's not going to run. Three lines, test it. 
and you take it back to base. Three lines and you add another three lines and you test it. Um, the backupping of programs, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot highlight even more. Um, get a whole lot of um, USBs and so that everybody is responsible for something. If you as the teacher can take out backups um, after the kids have left as well, but it is really good. If you can put it up onto the cloud, um, it's even a better idea. And put comments in. Um, it's not okay to delete somebody else's code if just because you don't know what's going on. Um, and so it's a good habit to get into. All right. Here are the, the resources that I was talking about. So this is uh, this is what um, EV3 lessons, that's EV3 lessons. This is Prime lessons. And then the Builder Dude 35 has got a lot of st stuff there. All right. And so tomorrow we're going to start with write code to move forward, wait, and then move backwards. And you have to come and show me what you wrote. And that is the end of today's session for now. All right. Are there any questions before I continue? Tomelo. All right. Okay. I see we've got a hand up from uh, Jerome Zamini again, but it's the ladies. Okay. Yeah. Go for it, Jerome. Yeah, I had um, the lecturer said he, she's going to give us um, the software that we should download. What is the name of the software? The, the software, software name we should. You yes. Can you go onto Google, onto the internet, uh -huh. Google Spike Prime or Spike Download. Okay, okay. Dumelo, can you please type it for me on the comment section, please? Because my network is breaking, so I couldn't hear her. Okay. You mean the Spike Prime or the EV3 classroom, uh, Jerome? What, what robots the do Spike you have? Prime. Which robots do you have? It's the EV3. Okay. Then, you, then you're going to download EV3 Classroom. So uh, hang on, hang on. I'll do it for you quickly. Hang on a minute. Give me half a minute. Okay, so I'm just going to share my screen again. All right. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. It's on Google. All right. So then you, you're going to say EV3 Classroom. Classroom download. There we go. There we go. All right. EV3 Classroom download. There it is. That you downloaded. Okay. Are we good? Okay, thank you so much. Yes. Very welcome. You're very, very welcome. Sorted. Another problem solved. Excellent. All right. Tamela, the next question. Tamela, you're on mute. Are you talking to me? Go ahead, Julia. Uh, Hi, sorry, Julia. I'm driving. Hi, sorry, I'm driving. So I don't know if the um, question, this is about the building part. Um, I saw there was seven, there's seven lesson plans for the building. So I just yeah. want to ask, do you have to do, um, do you have to do all of it with the learners or do you only have to do, do like, I will definitely go through all of them, but for the MOOCs, like, do you, do you need to do all of them? For the no. Unit or only? no, no, you don't need to do. Uh, so for the MOOCs, each unit has a multiple choice question quiz for you. And there's a challenge at the end. However, the challenge at the end assumes that you have done at least one of those learning objectives in each unit. Oh, okay. Okay, All right. I see. And then with the programming, sorry, I have not downloaded it yet. We are still our our equipment is on its way. I got the email today, so I'm very excited about that. Um, so 
I've worked with different coding programs, so but it, by the um, what it sounds like is it um, can you download the program like a file or how does the when you say save it on a stick like how does that work? The how actual you, program, the actual program. Yes, you do the program and you said like if you. I'll uh, show you. I'll show you tomorrow in the. I'll start with that. I'll show you how to download it onto the brain. Okay. So, oh, so it's like different moves of different robots that you can download and then. You know, you've got the, the coding language and you write the program and then you download that program onto the brain of your comp of your robot. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, I see. Okay, I understand. Okay, thank you. Okie dokie. Cool. Zelia, look off. Look on the road. <laughs> Oh, these people. Aye, tohi, tohi. Okay, we've got some interesting questions here. I must just make a note of this. So the one is the, the downloading. Okay, I need some more paper here to brain. All right, um, Lusanda. Yes, Lusanda. Yes, Dr. House. Um, on slide program activities unit two, and on slides start and end well, I didn't get you clear there, and I am interested to know what's going on on those two slides. Okay, so the, the whole thing is when you do programming, and I'll show you that tomorrow, okay. um, you've got to have a start and an end to your program. Otherwise, your robot doesn't know that the program has ended. Okay? Okay. And we call that the hamburger effect. So you must make sure that, like with a hamburger, you have a top roll and a bottom roll. Your program must have a good start and a good end. Okay. okay. I'll show you that tomorrow. Promise. Okay, then. Thank you, Doctor. You're welcome. I'm just making notes of everything I need to show you. Okay. All right. That's Lysanda. Uh Andrea. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Dr. Chaos. Um, I, I, I just have a quick question. I'm sorry if I might have missed it. I just want to know, you are talking about the units and the requirements that must be met. Um, are we using the same milestones as last year, or are these now new units that we are using? No, 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 no. no this is um, what you've got here. Um, this is M1 and M2. These are two training, uh, two modules, okay? And each module has four units. And if you download the, uh, the overview document, you'll, that's the content of this course. Okay. Andrea? Okay, think, yes, I've got it. Okay. okay. Thank you. So the milestones you are talking about, those are for reporting purposes. You should have received with your MOU for this year, you should have received a T's and C's, and that's in the breakdown for the terms. Okay, I'll go and ask my team members if any one of you of them received, and then I'll get back to you guys. If you haven't got it, Andrea, just send me an email. I'll gladly send it to you again. Okay, awesome. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Hose. No problem. No problem. Okay. Um, um, I don't know where Tomello is. I wonder whether they're not having load shedding on campus. Madhu, you um, want to I'm ask? still here. The, oh, yeah, the, the network I... is misbehaving here. Aye, 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 I'm aye, sorry, aye. I'm still with you. Continue. Oh, I thought there was calamity on the on the campus or something. Not yet. Oh, not yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll come back. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. We've got Mju. Okay. Oh, yes, Dr. Hose. Hi, yes. Uh, I wanted to ask the extra resources for this the robotics. Do do we only find it on YouTube or do you have a WhatsApp where you send? Because sometimes I miss the links for the meetings. Okay, um, maybe do send me an email and then tell me exactly which links you need and I'll gladly give it to you. Okay. Okay, ma'am. All right. No problem. Thank you. You're very welcome. Very, very welcome. Okay, Solomon. Hello, Solomon. You're the other Solomon. <laughs> Good afternoon, uh, Dr. Rose. <laughs> Solomon from Swani, yes. Yes, uh, Dr. House, I see, I hear you are busy noting things down there. Please yes. don't forget to send us the presentation slides. I will put it on my list right now. Yes. And then one I'll other thing. Them, but Solomon, I'm uploading them onto the MOOC portal, ne? Okay, no problem. Okay. 
And uh, they can even check on uh, YouTube for the recorded versions, the past yes. uh, previous recorded versions. Yes, they are there. Okay, okay. And then one other thing, Dr. House, I'm not sure if we submitted our MOU for this year. Um, can you send an email to Colleen at Challenge? Colleen at Challenge. Do you have an email? No, just send me an email and I'll, I'll forward it to her. No problem. Okay. Okay, I'll send you an email then. Cool. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Uh, all right, here we got um, do we done Tandiwe? Um hi Dr. Rose. I wanted to know what's the virtual gear challenge on Friday. On Thursday. Yeah. I, so I saw Friday. It's Thursday. Oh, okay. I'll check. Okay. Just check quickly. It's a competition that we are going to um, run from now until December, but it's online. So you can participate at your school and I'll explain everything on Thursday. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, Mr. Baboya, have you got, have you, can we hear you? Mr. Maboya? No. Oh dear, Tamela. I think we've we've haven't got Mr. Maboya. Yeah, and I see the microphone is still unmuted. Yeah, maybe see whether you can give him a call tomorrow. Um, okay. All right. Okay. Sure, ladies and gentlemen. What what is what does Tamela always say? My fellow South Africans, Tamela. <laughs> Uh, fellow South Africans, thank you so much for being part of today's session and uh, really appreciate you for taking the time. And to those of you who ask questions, thank you for being interactive. To those of you um, who did not get the full uh, glimpse of what was happening today, I'll encourage you to go to the YouTube uh, website to even check the previous recording. Otherwise, you'll have to wait for this uh, presentation as well as the recorded, uh, recorded version on your M1 uh, ISET robotics side. Otherwise, um, I see we only have last more question before I let Dr. Hose go. Please feel One free to question. unmute yourself. Hi, Bula. Hi there, Doctor. How are you? Good, good. I'm just having a thunderstorm starting out here, so it's cooling down at last. Okay, God bless, take care. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. It's been an awesome session. Thank you so, thank you so much. Um, go and download the, the coding. See whether you get something done um, to this evening. And we'll see each other then again tomorrow at 3 o'clock. All right. Thank you, Tomello. Thank you, Almarie. Uh, and thank you to everybody who asked really interesting questions. It's the only way we're going to grow this community. I think we need to have a frequently asked questions. It's just awesome. Thank you, everybody. Bye.